Um, hey guys, so let's uh, start with Houdini. Uh, I kind of want to explain, um, you know, what's going on here. Uh, since uh, Houdini is not the focus of this session, I'm not going to spend too much time going over everything and bore you with this. Uh, but it's good to kind of understand, you know, what's coming out of Houdini and how passes uh, are being generated. Uh, but basically, I have a I have a box and uh, generating points from it um, and. Uh, Right now, this is for the viscosity, so I'm um, just creating noise, um, you know, using an anti-alias noise and a turbulent noise on top, and um, and using that to basically using a red channel to to group um, uh, those into two separate uh, sections, and uh, basically I'm just doing a color VDB from particles and um, and just convert them back to <coughs> polygons and uh, on the on this on this area I'm, I'm setting the uh, viscosity on 400 and on the on the left side uh, on 10 and uh, yeah this is the flip setup uh, to create the fluid and uh, they go to the flip solver and um, Uh, and I'm using the sneaker as a uh, as collision and uh, after that I'm uh, randomizing the color based on uh, viscosity and basically after that I, I cache everything but I'm only caching from 20 to 80 uh, so if you go to frame 20 this is the first frame uh, of the cache and um, after that I'm using a particle fluid surface to bring the particles back and uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool, like dense uh, particle system. And uh, and after randomizing the p scale, and uh, I'm, yeah, bringing the velocity down a little bit, I'm ready to render. And uh, yeah. Um, so after this, uh, I'm just going to create uh, two or three more camera angles and going to render from those angles. Uh, uh, it's just going to be a beauty pass at this point because, you know, I want to generate the depth map and uh, line art uh, inside of uh, Confi UI. And um, um, here, um, everything just a very uh, low sample and I'm going to use a very basic dome light. And uh, that's it.
Okay, so we're in Comfy UI right now, uh, and um, uh, again, I'm not going to rebuild it, but let me just clean the scene a little bit from my other example. So after the checkpoint, we have this LoRa, which is very important for the animate diff, uh, for the consistency of it. And uh, okay, so this section is my IP adapter, and uh, let me just create a group. So IP adapter, as they you know explain it, uh, is pretty much an image uh, a prompter that uh, you know takes an image and breaks it down into uh, smaller tokens, and that's going to be mixed with your text prompt and uh, to generate a new image. Uh, so I'm going to look online to see what I can find. Uh, you know, we're going to find uh, some good photos of uh, of ice cream. Uh, you know, different flavors, different different colors and composition and contrast. Uh, so we can test them out. Um, also, I'm just uh, using IP Adapter Plus uh, as the model, and for the clip vision, it's going to be model uh, version one. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna include the links if you guys want to download these too. Um, So this goes to the IP adapter and uh, my LoRa goes to this and this goes back to my animate div. And uh, okay, here's uh, another uh, important note, uh, uniform context options. And what it does uh, is that uh, animate div only processes 16 frames at a time. So uh, what you need to do if you have more than that, uh, you need to send multiple batches. And uh, when you have the overlap of two frames, uh, means that it, it processes uh, uh, every frame twice just to increase the uh, quality of the model and I'm using um, animate uh, version 3 which is uh, this file um, I have um, I have other models too but we're gonna use this one Um, so here's my generic uh, negative prompt and I'm using a scheduler for the positive prompt and as you see there is uh, you know frame number zero uh, followed by a text prompt followed by a comma and uh, that means that you can add uh, as many uh, as you want and um, you can also change the prompt uh, over time uh, and uh, just you need to you know copy paste this line and change the frame number but we're gonna stick with this and just keep it like quite simple. And um, this is a free U uh, version two uh, node. And if you wanna know more about this, you can uh, you can search online. But pretty much, this is just a stable diffusion add-on that you know improves uh, uh, the quality of the image uh, by using the denoiser. All right, let's go over the uh, control nets very quick. Um, so I'm using two, one for line art and one for depth map. And uh, those passes are being generated from the beauty pass. And uh, just one thing, uh, you have to be careful. You don't want to go like really above like 0.75 or, you know, 0.8 um, on the on the strain because it might uh, add some artifacts uh, to your final image. Also, you want to give the model some freedom. Okay, so as far as the settings for the K sampler, uh, these are the values I'm, I'm you know, starting with. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna go with DDPM, um, which, you know, seems to be working just fine. Also, it's been recommended uh, for uh, this animative setup uh, to get a very, you know, kind of smooth animation. Uh, and, but we can test, you know, other other ones too. Those like plus plus ones. Uh, also for a scheduler. Also, we can try with Keras and Exponential. So this section uh, is pretty much done. Um, after this, uh, it decodes that image and it goes to the video combine. And this is your actual output. 
but this section right here also adds another layer of you know complexity to it it fixes some artifacts and you can see a, a, a much more uh, refined animation uh, that would come out of this <laughs> also we're going to use this picture um, i found um, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I think this is going to work. Um, also, we need to crop this image to a square format uh, to be used for, you know, IP adapter, and that's the format that it needs. Uh, so, yeah. Ooh, everything should be in order. Let's just give it a shot. Let's go. Yeah, this looks promising, but uh, as you see, there might be some, you know, jitters and skipping and some problems with the animation uh, that hopefully uh, the second iteration is going to fix those. Yeah, as I was uh, expecting, uh, uh, this is a much refined version of the animation and uh, this is an improvement for sure. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I had rendered this pass a long time ago uh, for another uh, a project, uh, so it wasn't meant to be used for this uh, uh, animation. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to go back to Houdini and have another version of no background uh, because uh, I want to have more control over the components of the scene. So I uh, rendered a, a new pass, uh, just changed the camera angle uh, just a tad, um, just to kind of improve it a little bit and uh, remove the background. So now with this new pass, um, let's uh, just do our first... Uh, experiment and uh, what I want to do after this I want to I want to play with a couple of different uh, reference images in IP adapter and uh, pick the best uh, to be implemented uh, in the next two shots oh hold on I don't need this anymore uh, so by the way, this is a section I ended up removing from this video because, uh, it, I mean, it kind of worked out. I used Coco Segmenter to uh, create a mask based on the color um, of my image uh, to remove the background. But uh, since uh, you know uh, I have like two colors in a in a beauty pass and it keeps changing, uh, you know it ended up not working at the end of a shot. Uh, so I went back to Houdini and removed the background and uh, I rendered it again.
okay cool uh, as you see this is working better um, so I zoomed out a little bit so you have more room also I added a plate and a prompt so that's part of a text prompt but uh, overall uh, has a you know a better composition too all right let's um, I want to I want to try this before uh, before changing our image just want to compare it uh, do the realistic vision 5.1 or maybe 6 I mean 6 is a it's not complete yet, but let's give it a shot anyway, and I'm going to switch to a 2, because uh, I'm going to use this. This one doesn't come with, or maybe it does, I don't know. either way. Okay, here it is. This is version six. Uh, it's not as stable as uh, you know, uh, Dream Shaper, but uh, I like the color and complexity of it. Uh, it's just something to consider. Uh, you know, it might be able to use for you know other passes. Okay, now we can bring in the passes for the other shots. Uh, so I was gonna work on this shot and I did a couple of tests. Uh, I ran into a lot of problems with the ground and perspective. And uh, the fact that uh, Comfy UI was treating this as there is, as if like there is nothing here on the ground, and so everything was dripping through the ground and didn't have any base, or wouldn't kind of comprehend, you know, what's happening. Uh, so I made a just a low low poly uh, a plate underneath it, um, and uh, rendered the depth map too in case. And uh, I think this is this is gonna work for this just fine. Uh, so I brought in my passes, uh, beauty pass and uh, depth map, and uh, I processed uh, a line art inside Confi UI, and everything's connected to the uh, control nets, and everything else the same. Uh, let's give it a shot. Okay, so this is it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, this is really good. Uh, also, there is something I want to try. Um, I want to use the red channel on my render uh, to create a mask and separate that part out and only use that to drive the animation and see what kind of effect we can come up with. And uh, the way I'm doing it is that, so I'm going to just move this here and uh, we're still going to need this. <clears throat> and I'm going to make it the size of our uh, shot. And uh, we need the, the composite from mask. And uh, okay, so what I want to do, uh, we need this. from color and we need the red one so red one would be something about like 150 maybe and uh, zero and just give it a like a higher like threshold okay so this would be we're gonna preview this and this would be our mask this would be destination, and this is the source. And uh, let's preview this. Uh, 
now. So batch number is the number of frames you have. Um, so either you can change this to 30 or, you know, I'm going to convert it to an input and uh, connect that, you know, primitive uh, node to this to control it from, uh, from that section. This would be our new uh, source, so we have to connect this. Um, oh, this is not what I wanted to do because now I have to. Okay, let's just do another reroute. And let's just use this. This goes here. Uh, this is the source. Now we have to replace this. All right, it should work. Okay, let's see. Let's see, it's almost accurate. Let's cancel it. It's a little too much, I think. Maybe seven should be fine. Yeah, you remove the you remove that outline of the plate. Change the image, by the way. I'm using this now because this one is like less contrasty and you know still sharp, and uh, because I, I don't want to get like you know those like images, like burnt images. And I'm using a realistic vision version six uh, again. All right, here we go. watching this it's pretty cool um, also what I want to do now I want to test the blue channel I'm gonna flip the channel and uh, use that uh, as the source you know maybe do this one like 180 and you know, 0 and 100 let's see uh, how this one turns out this might be interesting Yeah, this is working great. Uh, to be honest, like I don't, uh, I can't imagine like doing too much of the shot. Uh, this is already close to final. Maybe a little like color correction or something like that. But other than that, you know, I think you know this this is pretty good. Uh, you know, 95% done, and uh, I like how cinematic it turned out. So just uh, one more shot to go, and uh, uh, this is also what I had before, so I'm not going to change it, uh, uh, so hopefully I'm not going to have to, uh, but uh, let's test it anyway. We have it here. This is already loaded, 
So that's it. How many frames do we have? This is twenty to fifty or one to thirty, which is which is good, because exactly what we have here. So it's exactly what we have here. So this should be interesting. Let's let's see. So I just realized that I was actually using a, a wrong depth map. I was using this, uh, you know, for the shot before. Um, uh, but for this one, since we don't have it, we have to generate ourselves. So we just connected it to our, you know, Zoe depth map. And uh, now I connected this uh, to the source of the image for the control net. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, I like everything's happening here, and you know, I like all the layers, and it's actually following the animation precisely. So, um, yeah, great. Yeah, I think uh, we're almost done here. Um, uh, but just please let me know what you guys uh, think about this whole, um, you know, setup and workflow. Um, and just one more thing, uh, please go on newslounge.co and hit subscribe. Uh, we do a lot of research every week to bring the best news and updates and tools and, you know, things about media and the future of uh, our industry and whatever is related to visual effects and AI. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you soon.